This is a review for Unit 4. Uh, please remember to give me your uh, course number and section number with all communications. Here are a list of things that are going to be covered on the Part 1 and Part 2 test. Uh, it's pretty much all that we studied in Unit 4 about circles. Um, there's a lot of theorems there that you're going to need to know. You're going to need to know how to do quite a few calculations and um, the equation of a circle. The first theorem that you're going to need to be familiar with is the chords and arcs theorem. It says in a circle or in congruent circles, the arcs of congruent chords are congruent. It says uh, we have circle C or RS which is right here, you can see it with the congruent line on it, is congruent to DF, then that means that arc RS is going to have to be congruent with arc DF. So that's uh, good information to know. There's also the converse of the chords and arcs theorems, which says in a circle or in congruent circle, the chords of congruent arcs are congruent. So if you know the chords are, I mean, if you know the arcs are congruent, then you automatically know their chords are going to be congruent. There's the tangent theorem that says a line that is tangent to a circle is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at the point of tangency. Now, in this, uh, I think this is a problem, pretty sure. It says if line AD is tangent to circle B, at point C and the measure of angle ABC is 35, what's the measure of angle BAD? Well first you gotta kinda see where BAD is. It goes BAD. Well you know if this is 90, well let me not get ahead of myself. Let's see what the instruction, I mean the solution says. It says because line AD is tangent to circle B at point C, you know that AC is perpendicular to radius BC, so the measure of BCA is 90, which they show you with the red box. Okay, then it says find the measure of uh, angle BAC, and that's what I was fixing to tell you when I said I had to stop and not get ahead of myself. It says ABC is a triangle, therefore the measure of uh, angle ABC plus the measure of angle BCA plus the measure of angle BAC equals 180. So all three of these angles, this one that's 90, this one's 35, and A that we didn't know are all 180. So you can take 180 and subtract 35 and 90, you're going to get 55 degrees for angle BAC. Now, substituting known angle measures into the equation, they're just showing you all the steps they went through to figure out the 55 degrees. Now, find the measure of angle BAD. Well, you can see there that they've already identified that it's 125 degrees, but let's see why. It says now that you know the measure of angle BAC, you can easily find the measure of angle BAD. Because line AD is a straight line, you know that angle BAC and angle BAD form a linear pair. Therefore, the measure of angle BAC plus the measure of angle BAD equals 180. And so you just plug in the numbers you know. You do a little subtracting and you find out that BAD is 125 degrees. Now it says the converse and tangent theorem since the converse of the tangent theorem says a line that is perpendicular to a radius of a circle at its end point on the circle is a tangent to the circle. So if you see a line that's perpendicular to the radius at the tangent point of tangency, you've got a tangent. Uh, the radius and chord theorem says a radius that is perpendicular to a chord of a circle also bisects that chord. So that means it cuts the chord exactly in half. It says in the figure, A is the center of the circle and segment BC equals 12. So what is DC? Now I believe in one of the last lessons we did, we did this exact problem, trying to find out what DC was. 
So it says notice that segment BC is both a chord and a diameter and that A is the center of the circle. That means that AB equals AC. AB and AC are also radii, as is AD. So since you know that, and you know you've got a right angle there, you get to go in and do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the measure of DC is. And again, and it's in one of our last two lessons, I went through this problem in quite a bit of detail. Okay, your inscribed angle theorem says an angle inscribed in a circle has a measure that equals one half of its intercepted arc. So what that's telling us is if we know the measure of this angle right here, we can multiply it by two to figure out the measure of the arc. That also works the opposite way. If we know the measure of the arc, all we have to do is divide it by two to find the measure of the angle. So what is the measure of an inscribed angle whose intercepted arc has a measure of 100 degrees? So remember I said, if we know the measure of the arc, all we have to do is divide by two to find the measure of the angle. So the measure of the inscribed angle is gonna be 50 degrees because that's 100 divided by two. It says use the inscribed angle theorem to find the value of x, the measure of the intercepted arc. Well, remember, if you know the measure of the angle, you just multiply by two, and that'll get the measure of the arc. I believe 64 multiplied by two is gonna give us 128 degrees. Those last two theorems are probably the easiest that you have in this unit. It says length of chord segments. Now you've got to remember that you can multiply the length of chord segments of two chords that intersect and you're going to get them you're going to get the same answer. So if you see here AB intersects uh, segment CD, well if you take each segment and you multiply them together of each chord, you're going to get equal answers. And of course I have an example. It says determine the length of segment CE if AE equals 10. Well right here's AE and it's 10. Then it tells us EB equals 6. So right there, you're going to say 10 times 6 is 60. It says ED is 5, okay? And you want to find out what CE is. So let me take you through the math problem instead of just telling it to you like I started out doing. It says substitute the given values into this relationship. So there, you see, you got the 10 and the 6, just like I said, and we know they equal 60. Then we want to find out what CE is. So we have CE times 5. So here you've got 60 equals CE times 5. We're going to divide both sides by 5 and we're going to get 12. So we know the length of CE is going to be 12 units. And that works for any set of intersecting chords in a circle. Let's look at this one. They threw an X in there. So they want us to find out what AB equals. Okay, AB is the whole chord. All right. So we're going to have to do some adding as well. It says that AE is 5X plus 6. EB is 3 centimeters. CE right here is 2X centimeters. And ED is 12 centimeters. It says substitute the given values into the relationship. And so that's what they did right here. Just substituted everything they knew into the um, equation. And now what they're doing here is they're distributing this 3 to everything in the parentheses, and that's how they got 15x plus 18. And then they're saying 2 times 12 gives you 24, and they brought down the x. Now they're just going to do a little algebra. I bet they're going to start out by subtracting 15 from both sides. That's exactly what they did. So they got 18 equals 9x. Then they're going to divide both sides by 9, and they get 2x. I mean, 2 equals x. Okay, but we're not done. It didn't say find x. It said find the length of chord AB. So if you want to find the length of chord AB, you're going to take this part of the equation, the 5x plus 6 times 3. We're going to plug that 2 in for the x and see what the measure of AB is. So look what they did right here. They just, well, they, they're doing the same thing. They just did a different process. 
They're saying, okay, five times two plus six, probably gonna give us 16. There we go, we got 16. Now they're gonna go back and add that 16 to the measurement of EB, which is three. Yo, I, I have a bad habit of getting ahead of myself. So that means the measure of AB equals 19, and it's gonna be 19 centimeters. Okay, secant segments. Now this is where you probably need to study a little bit for your test because um, you've got to remember, okay, how am I figuring out measures? Because not only do we do secant segments, we do tangent segments, and we do chords and secants or chords and tangents, and you've got to remember whole outside, outside whole, and all this stuff. Okay, so be sure to study this part. What they're telling you is what the whole is, is um, AC. So let's look at point A to point C. That's the whole segment. And then when they say outside, they're talking about that portion of the segment that's outside the circle. So you're gonna have the whole times the outside equals the whole times the outside. So here's an example. And here we do still have two secants. It says find the, med or find the length of DC, which is an outside. If AC is 12, AC is the whole. BC is six, which is the outside. And EC, E to C is an out, I mean a whole, and it's 18. So let's plug everything in. We've got the whole times outside, whole times outside. And they're just showing you how it breaks down into the segments and then they're going to substitute the given values in for the segments 12 times 6 equals 18 times DC so 12 times 6 is 72 they divide both sides by 18 so 72 divided by 18 is going to give us 4 so the length of segment DC is 4 centimeters okay so it's good to write down this first, not necessarily the whole times outside equals a whole times outside, but it's good to write these letters down that represent the segments, AC times BC equals EC times DC. That helps you make sure that you plug in your given values into the right uh, position so you'll be able to calculate the correct answer. Here's another one where they've thrown an X in there and we're looking for the length of EC and here again, like I said, I, you don't necessarily have to write down whole times outside, but I would write down AC times BC equals EC times DC. Then you're gonna substitute the values that they gave you in the problem. So AC was eight, BC was the difference of X and two, EC is three X and DC is two. So we're gonna go ahead and do some distribution here so we got 8x minus 8 equals 6x. And then we're gonna start our uh, process of solving for x. Looks like they subtracted 6x from both sides. Notice that six minus 6x is gonna give us zero. It's important to leave that zero there as a marker. I've seen a lot of students confuse themselves by not leaving it there. So be sure to put it. Now that leaves you to know that you're gonna have to add eight to both sides. So you end up with 2x equals 8, divide both sides by 2, you find out x equals 4. But remember, we weren't finding x, we got to find the length of segment EC. So you're going to take that value that they gave you for EC, which is 3x, and that's what they have right here. Then they're going to plug that 4 in for x, and 3 times 4 is 12. So the length of segment EC is going to be 12 centimeters. So then you've got tangent and secant segments. It's pretty much the same process as doing two secants, except you're gonna take the whole squared. Because if you think about it, for a tangent, this outside portion right here is the whole tangent, okay? So when you take a whole times the outside for a tangent, you're really taking the whole tangent twice. So that's why they're squaring it. And look right here, BC times BC, you got the whole times the outside, same guys, okay? 
So that's why they say, oh, you know what? This will be easier if we just square BC. So let's see an example. They're wanting to find the length of AB. They gave us DB and CB, so let's see how this plays out. Now, you don't have to write whole squared equals whole times outside, but I would advise writing these segment names down. So that way you plug in your information into the correct spots. Okay, well, we don't know what AB squared is, but we do know that uh, DB is 27 and CB is 3. So we're going to multiply those two together and we're going to get 81. And what they do with this step right here is they take the square root of both sides of the equation. So the square root of AB squared is just going to give us AB. The square root of 81 is going to give us 9. So that means the length of segment 9, I mean segment 9, segment AB is going to be 9 inches. It says find the length of segment CB and they give us the measure of AB and DB. You've got that same setup again where we've got AB squared equals DB times CB. We're going to plug in the information they gave us. They told us that AB was 10 and that DB is 20. So 10 squared is going to give me 100. And then right here for this next step they divide both sides by 20 and they found out that CB is going to be 5. So that means the length of segment CB is 5 centimeters. Now circles and chords. It says, and you can go back and look at the lesson for this one. I did a little bit more animation so it's easier to see what they're talking about in their statements. It says Point Q is a distance of 5 centimeters from point P. So suppose you could see all the points that were 5 centimeters from point P. So this is what kind of figure do you think you would see? Well, if we put together all the points that are 5 centimeters from point P, we would see a circle. Because all a circle is is a whole bunch of points that are all the same distance from the center. Okay? Since the distance from a point on the circle to a fixed point is called the radius of the circle. And the term radius is also used to refer to the segment from the fixed point to a point on the circle. And the fixed point is always called the center. And centers are named by their uh, center point. So this figure represents circle P. Note that point P is not a part of the circle. Circle P is made up of all the points that are 5 centimeters from point P. And so all of your radii are going to have the same length, obviously, because they're all 5 centimeters from the center. You've also got a diameter, which means you're just going to take the radius and you're going to multiply it by 2. 5 times 2 is going to give me 10 for my diameter. Now all diameters of a given circle are congruent and have the same length. Any segment that joins two points on a circle is called a chord. So all three of these segments, CD, GH, and EF, they all represent chords. Now they, they also tell you that a diameter is a chord that passes through the center of a circle. Okay, but most chords don't pass through the center. So anytime we see a chord passing through the center, we just call it a diameter. We don't call it a chord. It says a circle is a set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from its center point. Make sure that you understand the meaning of the terms center, radius, diameter, and chord. Now an arc is a part of a circle that is formed by two points on the circle, and all of the points of that circle of the circle that lie between the two points. So if you go from C to D, you see they shaded it blue. That's going to be my arc. That's my minor arc. It says there's three sizes of arcs, semicircles, minor arcs, and major arcs. Semicircles are half a circle. Okay. Minor arcs are less than 180. Major arcs, greater than 180. Since a semicircle is an arc whose endpoints are also the endpoints of a diameter. 
A semicircle is named by its two endpoints and any points on the circle in between. So it doesn't matter which endpoint is named first. The in-between point must be placed between the two endpoints. And so you see what they've done here. They've named it L, J, M. So it didn't matter if the L or M came first, but J has to be in the middle. An arc that is smaller than a semicircle is called a minor arc. Remember I said it's less than 180? Well, a semicircle is 180 degrees. Oh, and let me go back. The arc is also just named by two letters. You don't use three. So this shaded blue area goes from point G to point J. So you can always tell if they're talking about a minor arc or a major arc by the number of letters they use to name the arc. Because if you look, when you had a semicircle or a major arc, you use three letters. So you can place chords, including diameters and radii on a circle so they create angles. If the angle has its vertex at the center of the circle, then it's called a central angle. So angle LPN and angle NPM are both central angles. If the vertex of the angle is on the circle, then the angle is called an inscribed angle. Angle SLM is an inscribed angle. And notice that the sides of the angle, or more accurately, the part of the sides that are inside the circle, are chords. So what is the arc length of minor arc JK if the measure of arc JK is 60 degrees and R is 6 millimeters? So you're looking for the arc length. What is the arc length of JK? Oh, all right. Remember that when it's asking for arc length, it's asking for your standard or metric measure. In this situation, it's a metric measure. They're wanting to know how long is that arc JK? So we're going to use the degree measure of JK to figure out what its length is. So look what happens here. You know that the full circle is 360 degrees. The portion that you're looking at is 60 degrees. Okay. You also know that the find the circumference of a circle. You're going to say 2 times pi times r. That's the formula. So they gave us the radius so we could plug that in for r. So look what's going on in this formula. We got 60 over 360 multiplied by 2 times 6 times pi. So really what they're doing is they're taking the ratios and they're going to use that to figure out what the length is. So what they did here is they simplified 60 over 360 to be 1 6. They multiplied the 2 and 6 to get 12. So basically all they've done is simplify their problem to make it easier to work with. Now they said, well, 1 sixth of 12 is going to give me 2. And notice how they bring the pi along. And now 2 pi would be the exact length of arc JK. But its approximate length is going to be 6.28 millimeters. So all they did to get the approximate was to say 2 times pi. Now, we've learned that corollaries are just stems off the theorems. So here's our corollary. An angle that is inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. And you can see there that it's true. They've created a right angle. Now they're telling us to find the value of x. Well, if you notice, AB is the diameter. Here's x. They just told me in my last um, slide here, they said an angle that is inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Remember, inscribed means that it has a point on the circle. So that means since D is on the circle, that means angle ADB is inscribed which means that 
angle ADE or the value of X, ADB or the value of X is going to be 90 degrees. They kind of just said everything I've said right up there in red. Okay, another corollary that we get is two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc have the same measure. So look here, you've got an inscribed angle ADB. It intercepts arc AB. Then you have angle AEB and it also intercepts AB. So since these two angles intercept the same chord, that means they're going to have equal measures. Now it says determine the measure of angle EDA if the measure of arc AD equals 146. So if you're thinking 146 is less than 180 and they only use two letters, so they're talking about this minor arc right here. This minor arc is going to be 156 degrees. They want to know what is the measure of this angle EDA. Well remember, anytime you have an inscribed angle, it's going to be half the measure of the uh, intercepted arc. So I'm going to have half the measure of arc AD, which is going to come out to be half of 146. So 146 divided by 2 is going to give me 73 degrees. So that's going to be my measure of angle EDA. Now they said you've got major arc AFD is 225 degrees. They want to know the measure of arc EDA. Now you're dealing with two different things here. You've got this major arc, but EDA doesn't intercept that major arc. So we're going to have to do a little bit of extra math here. Now here's one way that they work this problem. They said, okay, the measure of angle GDA, which is GDA, is going to be half the measure of the major arc AFD. So that arc is 225 degrees, so if I divide that by 2, I'm going to get 112.5 degrees. Well, if you look, EG, that's a straight line, so you're dealing with a linear pair. So I can take 180 minus the measure of angle GDA, which was 112.5. There you go. It's going to give me 67.5 degrees. Now the next way you could have worked this is this is the way I probably would have worked it. Okay? Because I know that I actually worked this before I put the solutions up here. And this is how I did it. I took, I said, okay, I know the whole circle is 360. AFD is 225. So if I take 360 minus 225, I'm going to find out what the measure of arc AD is. And then I know if I divide that by 2, I'm going to find the measure of the angle that I'm looking for. So there's 360 minus 225 gives them 135. Now they're going to take that 135 and they're going to divide it by 2. And multiplying by a half or dividing by 2 is the same thing. So 135 divided by 2 gives me 67.5 degrees. Okay, it says determine the measure of angle EDA if the measure of arc AD is 122. So remember, if this arc is 122, you're going to divide it by 2 to find the measure of angle EDA. So there you go, 61 degrees. Okay, it says determine the measure of minor arc DA. Okay, well we know that e the inscribed angle EDA is 60 degrees. We also know when we take the measure of that inscribed angle and multiply it by 2, we'll find the measure of the intercepted arc. So 60 times 2 is going to give me 120. Oh, sorry about that, I went a little fast. There we go. Now it says determine the measure of arc DFA. Well notice I know this inscribed angle is 80 and here is DFA. Now the way I would work this is I would say well if EDA is 80 then GDA has to be 100. And your inscribed angle multiplied by 2 
is going to give you the measure of your intercepted arc. So 100 times 2 is going to give you 200. But I think they showed us two different ways to work this. They sure did. They said the measure of arc DFA equals 2 times the measure angle GDA. So they plugged in what they knew. Now, for, since they don't know GDA, they said, well, I know if I take 180 minus the measure of angle EDA, I'm going to find GDA, which is what I did earlier when I said, hey, I know if EDA is 80, then GDA is 100. So they're going to say 2 times 180 minus 80 gives you 100. 100 times 2 gives me 200 degrees for the measure of arc DFA. Now the other way they did it was they took the 360 minus the measure uh, minor arc DA. So 80 times 2 is going to give you 160. I'm not sure how what order they did this in. Oh, they just took it two times. So they're saying 360 minus 2 times 80 gives you 160. So the measure of arc DFA, I just get happy with this clicker is going to be 200. Okay, it says if the measure of the minor arc equals 42 degrees and the measure of AD is 58 degrees, what is the measure of angle AED? Okay, well what they taught you on this is that you can find out the measure of these angles by taking these two chords, uh, arcs right here, arc AD and arc FB, adding them together and divide by 2. That will give you the angle measure. Same uh, process is going to be done here. They says, well, we know the measure that of angle AEF is 120, and the measure of the minor arc DB is 150. They want to know what is the minor arc AF. You're still going to set up your problem the same way. Then you're going to plug in the information that you know. Now all they did here was they took this 2 that is in the denominator. They multiplied both sides by 2 so they could get rid of the fraction. So that's how they got 2 times the measure of angle AEF. So then they plugged in information that they were given. The measure angle AEF was 120. They don't know the measure of arc AF and they plugged in 150 for DB. Now they're going to do some math. 2 times 120 is 240. And now I bet they're going to subtract 150 from both sides. It's exactly what they did and they got 90 degrees. Alright, now we're going to deal with two tangents. It says the measure of major arc ADB, ADB, see how it's a major arc, is 250 degrees. What is the measure of angle APB, which is this angle right here? Well, when you're dealing with two tangents, what you're going to do, well, first let's find out what the measure of arc AB is. So we're going to find out what that measure is, and all you've got to do is 360 minus uh, the 250 degrees. So we know it's 110. You're still going to add these two arcs together, add AB and ADB together, and you're going to divide by 2. I'm sorry, you don't add them together, you subtract their difference. So, and of course you always want to put the larger angle first, ADB, okay, so that way you don't get a negative number. So you plug in what you know, So 250 minus 110 is going to give me 140. When I divide that by 2, I get 70. So that's going to be the measure of that angle. So remember, when you have the two tangents, you're going to take its two arcs, divide by 2, and that's going to be the measure of your angle. So it says now the angle is 34 degrees. What's the measure of this arc AB? Well here, you're going to let 
x be the major arc ADB, okay, because remember, you've got to know both of those arcs to find out what the angle measure is. So the measure of ADB is just going to be 360 minus x, because that's what we're letting ADB be, is, three six, I mean is x, so we're just going to plug in x for it. Okay, so now I know the measure of this angle, APB, is going to be half the difference of the two uh, arcs. So remember, we said ADB was 360 minus x, and then AB, we're just going to subtract it, like this right here. Okay, so watch what happens. Now, they're also letting, uh, okay, they figured out the measure of the minor arc AB was 360 minus X. That means ADB is X. So, I'm going to take X minus 360 minus X. And when I figure out half of that, it should equal 34 degrees. So, let's see how this works. Okay, the first thing they did was they multiplied both sides of the equation by 2 so they could get rid of this fraction. So 34 times 2 is 68. 1 half times 2 is just going to give me 1, so that means it just kind of cancels out and disappears. So I'm left with x minus 360 minus x. Well, notice this negative sign means I'm going to multiply everything in the parentheses by negative 1. Holy cow, they went a whole lot further than what I expected. So, if I do that, I'm going to end up with x minus 360 plus x, okay? Let me um, write that in right quick because that can be kind of confusing if you weren't prepared for it. Let me get my pen. Okay, so what they did if I can make my pen work. Well, why isn't it writing here? Oh, there we go. All right, now, now we're cooking with Wesson. Okay, so, well, gee willikers. Okay, there we go. Maybe I just thought we were going, oh. Oh, I'm not plugged in. That's why it's not working. How silly of me. Okay, here we go. Okay, so they multiplied both sides by two. I've got, a, I've got a pen now, it's not writing. It's like I don't have any ink for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Well, doggone it. Okay, they multiply both sides by two. Well, these, if I go through and I multiply everything by negative one, that's going to give me a negative 360, but this X becomes positive. Okay, so then I'm going to add 360 to both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to get 428 equals 2X. So 200 uh, divide both sides by 2, I get 214 degrees equals X, which is the measure of the major arc ADB. Okay, but it wanted to know the measure of the minor arc. So you're just going to take 360 minus the 214 is going to give you 146 degrees for the measure of that minor arc. Okay, um, I'm going to do a part two of this lesson because this video is getting kind of long and I know it's hard to sit and watch this much. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one and I'll end up posting two videos.